Alright, what's up, old chat with time slot 2? What's up guys, I just Ward here. Welcome to The People Respond, my original documentary series. And for this episode two, we're gonna talk about racial injustice issues specifically in the city of Pittsburgh. So big shout out to Mr. Milky for allowing me to basically interview a bunch of his students. So that was really awesome. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of good things to say here. Um, as you can tell, this is a five segment uh episode so this segment will be uploaded each day hopefully if that's the plan i don't really have much else to say let's just go ahead and get into the questions of course i you know it may not seem like it because i'm mixed and i do say whenever I'm asked if I experience racism, that I have a higher level of privilege because I have lighter skin in this country. So I may not experience it on a daily basis, but I can recount um, one time going to Giant Eagle and uh, this dude that I grew up around, one of the deli workers, he was like, are you having a bad hair day today? And I was like, no, I'm actually having an amazing hair day. Like, you know, my hair looks nice. And he's like, oh, well, it's just a little bit frizzy. And, and you just, you know, it it just needs to, you know, you just have bed head. And I was shocked. I was like, this is my natural hair, and this is how it's always going to be, regardless. Uh, and the curl pattern changes due to humidity and whatnot, and it, it just felt really racist to me. It, it was just, why? why? Why comment on my hair when I don't personally... Oh, sorry, I switched my, switched my thing. <laughs> Um, but like, I don't personally know you and, you know, speaking on a black girl's hair is something that you should never do, period, because if you don't actually have it and experience uh, what it's like having black hair, then you don't know what a good hair day is and what it isn't. And I guess he could have had like, better, like he could have had good intentions when saying it, but um, it came off really rude and it was just tone deaf. So for me, um, I don't remember an instance, but I do remember it's quite possible someone had said like a, a Jewish joke and like I was like, oh, that's not funny. And they like they so like some people are oblivious, but honestly, I don't think I've experienced anything like uh, meant to be racist towards me. I have before, but it wasn't black racism. One day, me and my family walk into a Dollar Tree, and sometimes people say we look Hispanic. So one of the people, one of the cashiers from Dollar Tree, walked up to us and was like, "Come on, stop!" and started speaking us to in Spanish. And then my mom was like, "We speak English," and he was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you guys need anything?" And we're like, "Yeah, we're fine. We we live here. We're okay." And he walked away after that. I do feel like they're segregated, especially like like going in towards the homewood area and how like east of east now turning in like it's getting gentrified i live there and i could i see more white people in my neighborhood than i do black people now so yes i do of course there's a major history in america with redlining um pittsburgh's a redlined city um there are different uh red zones i know hazelwood is a red zone quote unquote and that basically just means that they were less likely to be given property because they seemed uh, that they wouldn't be able to pay back their loans. And that was majority um, people of color and uh, poorer white people. Um, and so, yeah, for sure. I think that the communities are separated, especially since, as uh, Chloe said, you know, there are different areas that are kind of being left alone. Uh, because they're uh, bringing in money and the ones that are um, still developing are um, kind of being gentrified and 
are also um, just changing rapidly. When I was li really little, I went to a daycare and that's not technically a teacher, but that was um, representation for me when I was really little. And then as I got older, it started to become more and more uh, white teachers teaching me, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's also good to have that representation from a very young age all throughout high school. Well, currently my health teacher is black. I'd say any others, um, maybe, I don't, I don't think so, but uh, like Jaden said, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is good to have like a, a mix of teachers. Yes, I have a couple of black teachers. My my elementary school, preschool, elementary school, a couple of them were black. One of my middle school teachers was black. Well, and I went to Westinghouse and PCA. So there was one black teacher I knew that was in Westinghouse in my middle school. And in PCA, there was, I think, at least two of them, maybe three. I personally, you probably by having to attention to it. Not that I can recall. I, I don't think um, my type of racism that I've experienced would uh, to be about my skin color, but um, you know, there have been comments about my hair, about me being a light skin and I seem very promiscuous, stuff like that, um, kind of, instead of it being uh, racist, it's kind of more uh, microaggressions. Um, but I, I don't think I've actually experienced anything racist um, in Alderdice. No, I don't. I wow. feel like there's still more stuff we need to teach and you only get taught it during February and even then some schools don't even teach it. Absolutely not. I I am taking a African American literature class this year. Um and it's labeled under PSP, which I wanted to be in an AP class, but you know, they only um have those courses as PSP, which is ridiculous. Um, because they do have these classes in college that you can take. Um and, and it's really informational. I, I love the class and I think it's an important class to take, but not enough people learn about it. Not enough people know about it. And, you know, why have a subcourse um, for African-American literature and history when it should be taught in uh, basic history curriculums? Um, I think there should be more of an emphasis on teaching the history of people who have lived in this country as long as it's been created, um, you know, and I'm, I'm sure um, most of you don't even know about Nicodemus, which was an all black town in Oklahoma, which is still thriving to this day. Um, and that's something important that I learned that I didn't even know about. And I've been in BSU and trying to educate myself. So I definitely think that, um, PBS should focus more on teaching history that isn't whitewashed. Honestly, not sure. I can't really speak for the Pittsburgh police because the only event that I have really seen them do like a terrible thing was with Antoine Rose. And, you know, that was kind of like, oh, well, the Pittsburgh police are terrible. And, you know, that that mindset kind of uh, carried along. Um, and I realized that it was a bias. So I can't really say if they're bad or not. I just think that there needs to be major reform regardless of cities. Um, and there needs to be more bias training, um, even if a city has not committed uh, police brutality or police have not committed police brutality within an, another city. I think it's really important that we have uh, these talks about reforming the police rather than abolishing the system in and of itself, because it's kind of already ingrained into America and we need someone to protect us, but that may not be police. It may be social workers or it may be, uh, you know, community policing. But then again, there are issues that come with that too. Like, uh, I agree with Jaden. Like, I honestly don't know so much, but I, I don't think how they handled things with Anton Rose was so good. I feel like they do an okay job, but I feel like they could do better if they really tried. Yeah. Do you have any examples of like, what, what can they do? 
I feel like they could respond to certain areas quicker because I feel like certain areas they'll respond quicker or later depending on where you live. Well, in my neighborhood, it's mostly uh, where I live is in uh, Somerset and it's mostly quiet and it's not a lot of bad things happening so uh i would say yes i feel like i'm okay because like my my neighborhood's turning into a white neighborhood so i feel like the police will respond quicker than they normally do okay. this is becoming more predominantly white neighborhood and what neighborhood is that east liberty, east liberty. Okay. honestly no i live in a predominantly white neighborhood and i'm one of the few black people that live in my neighborhood um i have a couple neighbors that i trust and and that i think are good people though but I still wouldn't say that I feel comfortable and safe in my neighborhood. I've seen like my best, like a couple of my best friends, they had to move because their houses were, they got possessed, they got repossessed and they had to be tight, they moved. I've seen like big parts of my neighborhood just change, new buildings and stuff. And like, I feel like I'm one of the last few row houses that are actually was there before. So I live in Lower Greenfield, which is kind of a sub-community in, in and of itself, um, there are major food apartheid where I live. The only uh, readily available food source near me is a Big Jim's, and I would have to drive at least like 10-15 minutes up a hill, and if I didn't have a car, um, I'd have to walk all the way up the hill or get a bus all the way to the waterfront. Um, so you can see in kind of this lower Greenfield, Hazelwood area that there are, is a lack of food sources. There's a lack of education sources because the nearest school near me is Alderdice, and that's all the way in Squirrel Hill. Um, there are just businesses being pushed out of communities and, um, you know, more businesses from outside of the community are coming in. And I always, I always talk about um, Hazelwood whenever I, I talk about these things because it's what's next to me and kind of I don't see any new businesses coming into Lower Greenfield or The Run um, because it's more of like a closed off community area. Um, but you can see in Hazelwood, they just put in a new bakery and it's a wide owned bakery, which go them. We love to see more bakeries. But it's the fact that there's people coming outside of the the neighborhood and putting in businesses and taking money out of the neighborhood. And so instead of um, more black owned businesses from people who have lived inside the community, creating businesses there uh, and putting money back into the community, it's kind of going out of the community. And we can see that with how they're going to develop Tesla right behind the neighborhood. There's going to be malls and supermarkets and all these things and they're telling people to paint their houses and do this and make your neighborhood looks nice and pretty so that when people drive past they can want to they would want to build a hotel or an apartment building so that we can gentrify it further and I see Hazelwood getting gentrified um, on a daily basis I drive past it every single day almost every single day and it's it's really a terrible thought to think that people who have lived in Pittsburgh their entire lives are getting pushed out into more suburban areas um it's just crazy i you know honestly uh in my neighborhood uh gentrification uh hasn't affected me but i i i feel like uh like what jaden said that uh it has affected a lot of areas and it's it's very unfortunate and hopefully there's some ways of getting businesses into these areas where they've been, it has affected them. Honestly, um, always going back into the neighborhood is such a great thing. I know with Hazelwood, they are opening um, a couple things that you can help with uh, food apartheid and you can help with community gardens and encouraging people to buy seeds for their backyard or, um, just having events within the neighborhood and also uh, making sure that your neighbors feel safe and, and being the person to reach out to your neighbors and ask if how they're doing. And, uh, you know, just being that active community member and educating yourself also is more than I could ask for. I feel like really going to like those city council meetings and saying like, hey, we don't like how you're just changing this neighborhood or like sign petition, make buildings with historical building so they can't take it down. I think it's possible that a lot of 
people could be better and not be so much as a bystander. And uh, like if they they don't want to step in, then they could. Um, sorry, <laughs> someone opened the door. Uh, they could, uh, you know, there's people who like if like with the police thing happened with George Floyd, they couldn't step in, but at least they had the uh, action to record it. And then since they recorded it, they had proof that he did that. And then he got the verdict um and we got the verdict that was good that because he he got he was guilty and there was evidence like that's what i'm trying to say like if you can't if you're not able to step in then at least do something to help the cause and with that being said that's about it for segment one so make sure to come back tomorrow for segment two i had a lot of fun filming it you guys are really not going to want to miss it and uh yeah but with all that being said that's it for me in segment one so i'll catch you guys tomorrow on segment two Peace.